I did that thing that I do where I talked too much, and now I have to do something different, because I don't have time to edit that. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? Jeff, your tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. I had a whole different thing planned out for today, but um, that's going to have to wait for another time. Pumpkin, you want to say hi? Where are you? I see you. What you doing? You hiding? The dogs are barking? Yeah, they get loud when they're barking. I thought I'd just do something quick and short. Plants are still inside. Not a ton going on outside except look at the trees. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely stunning. A new leaf opening up here on the philodendron. Showed that last week when it was just a little spear starting to pop out. That might make more sense to show you the tree from outside where there's a glare on the glass. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I think that actually looked a little bit better in the house, didn't it? I filmed a video on cleaning up the plants, getting the bugs off of them, because I've had a lot of people asking me about that. And unfortunately, I just don't have time to get that out for this weekend. But I can give you a rundown. I prune the stuff off the plants and then I blast them off with the hose and then I soak them in soapy water. Just a little bit of dish soap in a bucket. Something that's detergent free unscented that sort of thing let them soak for like 15 minutes then i spray the foliage down with the soap solution and then i rinse them off again and i take them in that video will be out in a few days though if you want more details there because it is more complex than just that but what i actually wanted to talk about was looking for warm spots in the garden i want to do a video here sometime soon might not be out till spring but i want to get it filmed sometime soon talking about really good like tropical plant dupes plants for where you're trying to kind of push the edge of what's hardy where you live it can be good to understand your microclimate or your warm zones because sometimes there are plants that we want to grow in our yards that are like close to being hardy enough but just not quite there so you live in zone five zone six zone seven whatever the case for myself i'm in zone six and there are a lot of plants out here for zone seven and that's only because i was able to look at things and figure out where things are a little bit warmer and taking some risks that is part of it How often have you seen a plant and it like you're in zone five and it's rated for zone six and you're like oh i wish it was just a little bit warmer oh well, you know after looking around and evaluating things you might have a warm spot that would you could put some zone six plants in maybe even zone seven you can bump it up by two zones i don't know there are plenty of things grown out here that are said to only be hardy to about zero degrees fahrenheit to 10 degrees fahrenheit it drops below zero degrees fahrenheit here almost every single winter this is a really great time of year to start observing the various cold zones in the yard help plan things out better for next year like right here you can see there's some cold damage doesn't really need cold damage on anything else out here but these guys right here no they're not happy they're not happy at all you can see the banana cannas up here they have some frostbite on them their leaves are wilty and gushy then just right across the path over here they're looking much better maybe just a hint of cold damage on this one leaf but the rest of them are fine look there's only a few foot difference there it's amazing the difference it can make just having the protection of the house right there so yeah in the fall the cold temperatures start rolling in you can start to see where plants will start to get more damage then i know hey that's a spot that's not going to be the best area for planting things that maybe aren't hardy where i live so i'm in zone 6b this wouldn't be a probably a great place to put anything that's something that's hardy in zone 7 but not zone six. Clearly this is a spot where the cold air moves right through here and gets the plants. So it's gonna come down these hills here, creep along the ground and funnel its way out through there. So it makes sense that that spot's more exposed. This has a little bit more protection because it has a house behind it. And there's a corner right here. Typically a corner like this could be problematic because it can be a spot where cold air can settle. When it's moving down, it can come through and kind of bundle up in there. When it's coming down, it can move through and over and just sort of settle back there in that little crevice. You have to have a lot of air movement to get that moving through. However, what I've noticed over the years out here is because of this pavement right here, the winter sun is really strong. It beats off this pavement and it kind of, there's some refraction, reflection going on in there and it really actually heats things up over there. So this spot's always been really nice and warm and toasty, but I do not think that would be the case if this pavement wasn't here. If this were just grass and it wasn't something that's going to soak in some warmth and re-release that at nighttime and it's a dark surface, then chances are this spot would be more cool. Ooh, that is a chilly breeze. I'm come stand back here in my corner where the wind can't get me. And again, just observation. There's cold damage on other plants, yet there are plants that are not at all hardy here that are still blooming. Like the cold would have taken the blooms right off these gingers if it was anywhere near as nippy in the spot as it was over there where those colocaceas were. But no, the blooms still looking good. There's still some little petals, some flowers hanging out down there inside the bracts. Things are nice and toasty over here. If you don't have tender perennials in your yard, plants that are going to respond very quickly to frost. And watching where your frost is in the morning is also a really good way to determine colder and warmer spots. Colder spots, the frost is going to stick around longer on the grass or on the mulch or whatever plants you have in the bed 
warmer spots that will thaw faster. That's the same thing with snow too, right? So now it's gonna melt in the warmer spots before it does in the colder spots. If you have a spot, like I have a spot down over here in this corner underneath that coach light, the snow will last there for days after it's melted from anywhere else. So I know that back here in this corner, very, very, very chilly, a bad place to try and put something like bananas, crepe myrtles, anything that's like, eh, maybe you shouldn't grow here, but you might be able to do it. They, no, they'll just die over there. So it's all about evaluating microclimates. That was the whole point there. And that was something I wanted to make sure I talked about before I do a video, talking about tropical plant dupes or pushing things as far as hardiness goes on certain plants. It's really helpful to be able to look around and know where those warmer spots are in the yard. Bodies of water, they help keep things more mild. They'll keep the ground from freezing quite as quickly, sometimes from freezing at all if things are planted close enough. So usually near ponds, fountains, lakes, those sorts of things, things will be a little bit more mild and calm, even if it freezes over. And that's only true though, if the water's deep enough that it's not frozen solid all the way through. If you have a like a pond that's maybe only a foot deep and the whole thing freezes solid, it's just an ice cube in the ground. There does not need to be a zone where things are still liquids. But maybe you put a de-icer on the surface of your pond, keep a hole in it, and that helps keep the water down there. Then anything that's planted in a close proximity around that pond, the ground's not going to freeze as much as it will a few feet out from it. Yeah, corners tend to be warmer, but sometimes they'll also collect the cold. Pavement, stone, brick, those are all things that'll soak up the sun. They'll soak up that heat during the day and then they'll re-release it at nighttime and provide a little bit of a protection zone around the plants. It's not a guaranteed fail safe to keep things extra warm, but you can see like I have some orchids here that I have like, I don't have space for them yet. I will soon. I was like, I'm gonna put them over here on the brick wall. But I know that this spot right here with the pavement, the rock, and then that stone. This will be a pretty warm zone for things. Because these are all three surfaces that are warmer and then there is some reflection again during the day when the sun's back behind me. Wind barriers are another important thing to keep in mind, whether that's through something like a hedge, maybe bamboo screening, maybe you have a privacy fence. Anything that's going to slow the movement of air blowing through can make a really big difference. And a lot of places, one of the issues when it comes to the cold with the plants is actually from the wind and then from the shifting of freezing and thawing from night into daytime. So wherever there is a barrier to help protect protect and help keep those breezes from shooting through really fast and blowing all the moisture out of the plants. You know, like I was just really cold because there was a breeze over there. That's the same thing for the plants. If there's something to help kind of block that breeze, then that'll also help keep things a little bit warmer, help keep the cold air from moving in. And that's one of the great things about evergreens. Love having some big evergreens around. They help stall the wind. They help provide a buffer so things stay a little bit warmer, even just more pleasant out if you want to be outside. Yeah, those are all just natural things to look at, pre-existing things, things you can add like hedges, walls, those sorts of things. Those are all factors that can help influence the microclimate in the yard. There are tons of other things you can do to help protect the plants. That's not really what this video is about though. Mulching, leaf cages, heat wire. There are just tons of things that can be done to help push the zone a little bit further. But I like to know where the warm and cool spots are while I'm doing my planning. So in the fall and in the winter, I'm thinking about what kind of plants I want to put where. So it's important for me, I like to pay close attention to where the damage is happening first, like over here. Very cold. This is going to be a no-no zone for tender plants. There's something that is important to point out here. Notice where all the damaged foliage is. Yeah, it's up high. It's on everything up high. The things that are closer down to the ground, they're fine. Is the ground still warm? The ground's still releasing some heat. It's providing some protection. So it's going to be the edges of the leaves that are more exposed. Anything that's up higher and wasn't getting that protection from down below, that's another good thing to look at. As I know, okay, so it was really cold up here. So I can't necessarily jump right into the conclusion that this is a really cold spot because I'm seeing the damage here first. With things that are meant to die back, like these colocasias, I'm not worried about this because they're gonna get cut down and mulched over anyways. Hopefully they'll come back next year. It kinda depends on the winter. The winters here are always kinda, eh, never really know what's going to happen. And things are more full down below, so that's gonna help hold in some of the heat that comes up from out of the ground at nighttime when the cold's moving through, which is another reason things are looking a lot better down low than they are up high. If I were to thin a bunch of this foliage out, then I bet that impatient probably wouldn't be looking very good right now. And I can't say that for sure. Sometimes the sun impatience are a little bit more cold tolerant than just the regular ones. Okay, there we have it. I've wanted to talk about that for a long time. What are some things you guys do to evaluate your microclimates, your warm and your cold spots? I know some of you have yards where things are so extreme that you really actually do have to plan out heavily what can go where because some spots tend to just be sopping wet and icy cold whereas other spots might be a lot more warm and easier to work with. Or mild I should say. Not necessarily warm when you're growing below zone 7. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. I love hearing from everybody. Always learn something new every single weekend. All right, I gotta get back to work. There's maybe a cold front moving in. I mean, it's chilly right now, 
But the forecast for next week for I think Monday night and Tuesday night just keeps flipping and flopping all over the place. Like the other day it said it was going to be 26 degrees as the low. And then the next day I was like, nah, it's going to be 40. And then it dropped down to 27. Then it went up to 33 and then it went up to 38. And now it's back down to 33. So I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to do here. I'm just going to plan for the worst, which means getting the plants cleaned up and getting them inside. Probably. We'll see what happens with the forecast. Hi, I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. All right, this is a shorter one. Get back to the longer videos here in just a couple weeks, probably. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye, bye.